Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. We've got a piece from AMB Crypto today titled XRP Tech Thrives as Developer Tinkers with Tipbot to Make It More Transparent. And I want to talk about this in the context, a little bit at least, of, of XRP price because what I keep seeing day after day after day is the development of a legitimate ecosystem in part to, well, it's internet, all internet of value, but in part through Interledger Protocol and, and of course, Part of it's XRP. And despite the, 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 the fact that investors within this asset class have yet to properly value those cryptocurrencies that can be bought and sold on open cryptocurrencies exchanges, despite that, developers continue to build on top of the XRP ledger. I want to talk about that. I've also got a very interesting Twitter thread I want to share with you. It, uh, it includes comments from Brave browser creator, uh, I think his name's Brendan, and then Stefan Thomas, who is the uh, well, former Ripple CTO and creator of, of Coil. And they had a little bit of a back and forth about uh, kind of big picture stuff. Does Coil make sense? Does it not? And I found it interesting, especially in light of the news, which I covered in a separate video about Coil, and then I didn't find this until afterwards, or I would have chucked it in that video but uh very interesting stuff nonetheless and then i'll close out this video with a piece that i found fascinating from dailyhodl.com titled rich millennials are placing big bets on bitcoin and crypto now before we get going here if you would please delicately tap that like button and if you're a fan of ripple on xrp go ahead and subscribe to the moon lambo channel all right the definition of the word innovation may be dreary but it is something that has set the pace of human evolution a twist in ideas is all that is needed to propel one generation into another era. Necessity has always been the mother of invention. Likewise, when self-sufficient XRP community felt the need for a tipping system, Wheatse Wind cast magic spells with his coding to charm the uh, to create the XRP tip bot. This solved the concern of the candid and exuberant community that wanted to express its appreciation through XRP tips. This tipbot system is currently used not only on Twitter, but also on Reddit and Discord. Wynn's innovation helped many, but these systems are often looked at with suspicion of being misused. Even though Wynn made it foolproof by providing data on transactions taking place in real time, it lacks something. The community was introduced to Daniel Siedentopf, who, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, uh, one of those one among those with distinct ideas who is also a developer. Daniel realized the benefits of this tipping system, but wondered about how making it more transparent would help the community. He took it upon himself to solve this problem and thus created XRP Tipbot Statistics page. This public page provides any member access to Tipbot insights like accounts that receive tips, sent tips, spent tips on the overall network. While Wynn's page provides overall live statistics, Daniel took these live feeds to act as an archive for all transactions taking place via TipBot across all social media. Wynn's work with TipBot had one API on his page where users can view transactions taking place through TipBot. Daniel took uh, this uh, a step forward and made his own API that was equipped to scan Wynn's API for recent transactions and upload retrieved data in a systemic fashion. Daniel told AMB Crypto, quote, The maximum delay of uploading the live data would be of 60 seconds and not more than that. A look into the statistics provided by XRP Stats website found that the most receiver of tips was the father of the application, Wheat Say Win, with uh, 12,488.02 received in XRP. Uh, Wheat Say Win told AMB Crypto, quote, I'm honored and really proud of the XRP community. Their generosity is amazing. As I don't charge fees and don't make any money with the tip bot, people send XRP my way to cover the hosting costs. It's interesting to see other non-XRP tip bot operators in the past shut them down because they didn't break even. With the XRP community, this is completely different. And isn't that, that not the coolest thing? I have, I have said it before and I'm going to say it again. The XRP community is the best community in, in all of cryptocurrency. And fine, you can say I'm biased, and I guess technically by definition I am. But I, 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 didn't, uh, I didn't reach this opinion 
um, you know, on any sort of ideological basis. I just, I just joined, uh, joined, like there's a membership for me. You know, I just jumped on Twitter, like I'm, I'm sure many of you have, and I, I participate wherever you want to participate. You can participate in the comment section on YouTube videos, uh, whatever it is, or, or Reddit or Discord. And um, I just found that it's just some of the most amazing people out there, very intelligent people, sharp people, uh, many from a tech perspective, many just from an investment perspective, trying to figure out, okay, there's something to this cryptocurrency thing, how are things going to evolve, what's this all going to look like, and just, just fun people to, to interact with here. That's what I found. And so, anyway, peace continues. When depreciated Daniel and his innovation? He said that it added even more transparency to the tip bot and has helped various developers nurture the ecosystem. Apart from Wind, many other prevalent XRP community members too made it on the list like Hodor, Tiffany Hayden, and Alex Cobb. It was surprising to see XRP Trump on the list since he has been on Twitter uh, hiatus for over five months. Dr. T took the second position with 10,480.22 XRP and was also one of the generous tippers as he sent 13,632 in tips. Which is cool stuff. Anyway, uh, Daniel concluded, quote, I, uh, Long-term vision is to provide transparency and show some cool stats for the XRP tip bot users. From time to time each month, I also use the website to gather some more interesting stats, which are not directly shown on the website, and publish them for the XRP community on Twitter. All right, and then the piece continues. Despite being in the choppy waters for the past few months, the community has surfed through with novelty solutions. And he means novel solutions, I think, but hey, crypto media... Whatever. Uh, for example, XRP community fund that was formed to support small projects within the uh, within the community. Ripple has been driving XRP's adoption across mainstream platforms, and it has been possible due to the innovative technology created by the developers of XRP and Ripple. Tipbot stats page may not be the primary product by Daniel, but with a simple twist, he helped the community move towards transparency. And that's one of the most amazing things. You get these XRP community members just just love of doing this type of developer work, adding their own little piece, you know, their, their own little, uh, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever they can contribute to the uh, the XRP community here. And that's kind of how it was with We'd Say Win, too, because it's the coolest thing. He's at this point where he's actually, you know, he created XRP Tipbot. Then he started XRPL Labs which Ripple ultimately funded through their spring initiative. And he just, you know, it's not like Ripple hired him to start doing stuff. He just had a passion for this stuff and seems to be a rather intelligent and able uh, developer. And that's that's where it all stemmed from. So cool stuff here. All right, uh, next, I liked this. Uh, this this is a tweet from um, XRP Boy here. I'm just going to show the screen capture part of it here because I just wanted to make a quick comment on this here. And so this is a, a screen capture from saveonsend.com. And it uh, states, Bitcoin slash blockchain money transfers is instant and thus doesn't carry FX volatility. Okay, so, but here's a quote. The, near, the uh, nearly instant free transfer via Bitcoin was true to some extent up until the middle of 2015. But the Bitcoin community has been unable to solve a technical problem which led to systemic transfer delays and higher fees. Uh, regular cross-border money transfer is already evolving to a real-time payment. <clears throat> Indeed. And so I wanted to highlight this to state uh, so many of these problems that you have fundamentally with Bitcoin from a technological perspective, it's already been solved, especially as it pertains to uh, you know speed of transfers and cost of transactions. You've got that with XRP right now as a superior layer one technology. And it can actually be used to facilitate uh, cross-border transactions and be a XRP can be a, and is a bridge currency for cross-border payments. And it's just funny to me. I'm not going to read all of these right here just for the sake of time. There are three screen grabs here. They're on the screen in case you actually want to take a look and pause. That's, that's fine. But uh, Bitcoin was never going to be the end-all be-all. I will read this quote, actually. I didn't read this. This is from Roger Ver, November 2013. This is a quote. I think we will know when Bitcoin has reached prime time, when it is transferring more value each day than Western Union or MoneyGram. Okay, so uh, more value in terms of what? Pure speculation because nobody's using it as money. And it's also not being positioned to, to be adopted as a bridge currency by anyone in the world. Because that would be stupid because it would cost a lot of money to do so, right? Oh man, Bitcoin maxis. Uh, here's a tweet from, uh, from Kevin Cage here. His response to uh, the video by the bearable bull here and wrote, uh, might not agree with everything you said, but you did cover some great info. Well done. Um, 
here's the part I wanted to get to, though. I had to do with price here. Hashtag XRP community. I cannot predict when or how much XRP will be someday. I just believe that 25 cents is extremely undervalued, even if we do hit lower lows for this year. Long term, I am bullish. And he writes that in all caps, and I absolutely share the sentiment here. And then he writes in a separate tweet, this is Kevin Cage again, I just remind myself that we hit over $3 with zero utility. Let that sink in and consider the future after regs is in regulations. And that's a, that's an absolutely salient point, which I have made myself on the Moon Lambo channel. If, if XRP is capable of going to $3 with most of the world not even knowing it and with with there being zero utility, just imagine when utility actually kicks in. When people see that businesses need XRP to facilitate their business models and the way in which money can move around the world now. People are going to figure this out. Institutional money, this is not financial advice, by the way, at all. I'm just sharing my opinion. But I believe institutional money, as a result, will come in. There will be additional retail speculators on all this stuff. And there are other use cases for XRP as well. So I find that fascinating. Speaking of other use cases, take a look at this thread. I wanted to run through this, and Stefan Thomas ended up jumping in. So there is a, a tweet here from Mozilla. And I covered this story in a previous video today. And this tweet from Mozilla states, In keeping with our mission to foster a healthy internet, we're announcing our latest collaboration. Grant for the Web $100 million program with COIL and Creative Commons to power, empower individual creators online. And then click there to learn more. All right? And then somebody named Just a Guy on Twitter, at AJ580, tagged at Brendan Eich, uh, co-founder of Mozilla, and he writes, uh, do you have any thoughts about these grants? Will Brave seek a grant? I think it's clear that Brave is doing a lot of work on the uh, web monetization ecosystem. You can see here, so Brendan, so he was not just a co-founder of Mozilla Firefox, uh, but also co-founder and CEO of Brave. And you can go to brave.com to check out more. Anyway, and so uh, just a guy wrote, or I'm sorry, let me read this. Did I read that? It sounds like. Oh, right. Okay, so Brand Brendan said, this is all XRP grants, it sounds like. We can use them easily via BAT. Uh, what's that What's that stand for again? Basic attention token? I could be wrong. It was something like that anyway, BAT. And with, uh, and with privacy and anonymity by design. The government's FAC answer is too vague for me to bother writing an application and 2020 is next year so who knows use brave and attention token they are real now and then just a guy responded i use both currently love the native bat integration but i also like being able to add my own extensions to brave including coil uh, which is also real now as a user of both simultaneously they complement each other nicely and then brendan writes i read coil's privacy policy and won't use it without major fixes how, how many publishers have signed up? And so here's where Stefan Thomas jumped in, and this is the creator of COIL. And he writes, You don't have to use COIL. Hopefully someday, Brave will implement web monetization natively, using BAT, of course, and we can fight for an open monetization ecosystem together. Which is awesome. That's kind of the concept. And in our value, everybody that it, everybody it's like ever been associated with Ripple gets it. They're not trying to be the winner take all. They're they're just trying to get their piece of this this new financial infrastructure. And they, so Brendan responded to that and wrote, Web monetization conflates attention measurement slash economics with settlement mechanics. No one should presume it is the winner. I know how standards work from thirty years doing it since NFS days. Premature, narrow specifications usually flop. See bat growth for our stats. And St Stefan, Rond uh, Stefan Thomas responded to that with this. I have huge respect for you. JavaScript is practically my life. I do have experience with cryptocurrency, though, so I'll warn you that tokens tend to trap people in an us-versus-them mindset, the exact opposite of what the web has always stood for. Don't make that mistake. And there you go. No, no little silos that, that just uh, are just going to win the day. You know, there's not going to be one single cryptocurrency or you know, pick your browser, whatever it is. It, 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 it's there, everybody's going to have an opportunity first of all to fight for this, and there's going to be uh, an opportunity for money to flow around the world much more seamlessly. That is called the Internet of Value. I like Stefan's open look at all of this, and so we will continue to let time pass and see how things flesh out. All right, last piece for this video titled. Rich millennials are placing big bets on Bitcoin and crypto. 
A new survey of affluent millennials finds the coveted consumer demographic is investing in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency at a far greater pace than the rest of the population. The UK law firm Michael Moores and research consultancy Comres interviewed 501 people in the UK who were born from 1981 to 1996. All participants had to have investable assets of 25,000 or more, 25,000 pounds. According to the results, a full 20% say they have already invested in cryptocurrency, a number that far outpaces uh, estimate on the general population, which typically fall in the range of 1% to 3%. Michael Moore's senior partner, Andrew Oldland QC, says the results indicate millennials may be starting to view crypto assets as a new paradigm shift in the world of finance. Now, here's a quote. The survey result that 20% of those interviewed have invested in cryptocurrencies contrasts a recent survey by the FCA, which suggests a figure of 3% across the general population. This suggests a willingness amongst millennials to move away from traditional forms of investment and to embrace new technologies, almost regardless of the risks, perhaps part of a new identity for a new generation. And there you go. I just found it fascinating. And cryptocurrencies, uh, they are not going away. They are here to stay. From my perspective, there is a 100% chance the asset class will be here forever, or at least as long as the internet exists, you know, because, and my reason is is so different than many others. It's not because of a particular uh, use case. Well, not not the initial one that Satoshi Nakamoto envisioned of using Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer cashless system, but I just understand that business will need cryptocurrencies to facilitate specific business models. And as such, native assets on blockchains should and do have actual value on open markets, cryptocurrency exchanges. That's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.